All right, we are live. So good afternoon, everyone. We are all set for the live broadcast stream of today's special Louis C. and PEDH committee meeting uh, for 5.30 on HPA TV, Comcast, and Frontier Government Channels 96 and 6032. It'll also be streamed via hpatv.org, the HPA TV Facebook page, and HPA TV Roku TV, Apple TV, and Amazon TV apps. It'll also be rebroadcast and made available on the HPA TV YouTube channel. And so welcome everyone and thank you everyone for joining. So I'm going to uh, call out the tiles, uh, the Zoom tiles as I see them. So we have a uh, Councilwoman uh, Surgeon who is a voting member on PEDH. We have our newly elected chair of PEDH, Councilman Sanchez. Uh, we have uh, Councilwoman Hercules, who is a member, a voting member of PEDH. We have Councilman Gale, who is a voting member of PEDH. And those are the counts and uh, Councilman Mictum, excuse me, Councilman Mictum, who's also a voting member. Um, on the screen in front of me, we have Cliff Thurmer from Goodwin University. We have Sandra Ward. Uh, we have Peter Br Bryanton, uh, we have Aaron Howard, we have Andrews, Tandrews, um, sorry, I couldn't get the name uh, beforehand. Uh, we have Corporation Council, uh, Councilman Gale, can you mute? I think you're doing the, the whole Chipmunk thing again. Um, <laughs> uh, it's, a, it's an ongoing joke with our, um, with, with, with uh, the mics. Uh, and uh, we have, uh, uh, Corporation Council Alexandra Lombardi, and then I know we have the uh, other Corporation Council Minna. I forgot your name. Please excuse me, uh, but I know it's the other Corporation Council. And then we have two legislative liaisons, uh, Noelia Ortiz and Haley Green Ortiz. So welcome everyone to our uh, very important meeting today. So I'll pass it off. We have our um, that's a call to order, and so our regular agenda item. Uh, Councilman Sanchez, who is the uh, again the new chair of the PEDH. So, um, do you want to call together the item, uh, Councilman Sanchez? Yes, thank you, uh, Councilman uh, LeBron. So, um, welcome everyone. Good evening. Uh, this is a, a special meeting of the uh, PEDH, and our first agenda and only agenda is two point one of the regular agenda of Monday's uh, council meeting. And it is a uh, resolution by Mayor Bronin with, uh, with uh, uh, the authorization for the mayor of the city of Hartford to accept $1 million in funding from the state of Connecticut Department of Economic and Community Development, DECD. And then uh, we have with us to uh, conversate on that is our director, um, Aaron Howard, I believe Peter Bryanton also, and from Goodwin University, uh, Mr. Cliff Thurmer. Erin. Thank you, Councilman Sanchez. Um, good, good evening, everyone. Thank you so much um, for this opportunity to speak. Um, I'm actually going to um, turn this over to Peter Bryanton as an opportunity for council to hear from um, our project manager, senior project manager, who's actually responsible for working through this grant with Goodwin College. Um, but as Councilman Sanchez said, this was a grant um, that the city was awarded um, a while back um, to support these two walk-in centers. So with that, Peter, if you don't mind sharing with council what the request is, and then from there, we will turn it over to Goodwin to kind of provide some more information. Sure. Thank you, Aaron. So uh, good evening, councilors, and thank you for the opportunity to speak tonight. Uh, my name is Peter Bryanton. I'm a senior project manager for the Economic Development Division in DDS. The item before you tonight is a resolution to accept $1 million in state funding for the creation of two walk-in manufacturing training centers, um, which will be de developed and operated by Goodwin University. So back in um, April of last year, the city was notified by the Department of Economic and Community Development that the State Bond Commission had approved funds for the creation of two manufacturing centers and that the city would be required to apply for the funds and pass those funds through to Goodwin College. Shortly thereafter, the city began a dialogue with Goodwin College and learned that they were planning to operate both centers in Hartford, 
one in the north end and one in the south end of the city. Since then, Goodwin has secured uh, a south end location on Park Street and is currently exploring space in the north end of the city. They are hoping to be able to offer classes as soon as this summer. Uh, our partners from Goodwin College, as you know, are here tonight in attendance. Um, I have been working closely with Sandra Ward, who is the VP of Strategic Partnership and Development, and also Todd Andrews and Cliff Thurmer, who are both on the call tonight. Um, so I'm going to turn it over to them to tell you a little bit more about the details of these centers and what they're for and how they're, they're going to benefit the residents of Hartford. Thank you. Okay, great. Uh, well, I'll, I'll give you an, a little background uh, about what we'd like to be able to do with these centers. Um, you know, a year ago, um, Hartford was, uh, um, has a great labor market and they still do. And, but we had a lot of uh, unemployed people in, in Hartford and, and the surrounding area. And one of the things that we want to be able to do is we, well, we have a huge commitment to the city of Hartford and the greater Hartford area. And this is a really exciting opportunity for us to be able to go and provide uh, some training opportunities and explore exploration opportunities to folks who may not be aware of the many opportunities that are in advanced manufacturing and, and uh, today. And by opening up um, a community training center, you might say, uh, where folks could literally stop in, walking off the street, um, uh, get exposed to things like uh, welding or mecha uh, mechatronics, where mechatronics is the connection between um, how machines are powered. So it's electrical or pneumatic and, and how that makes the machines work if they're good with their hands. Um, things like CNC machining and uh, computer numeric controlled and working with, with the technology. Um, the quality aspect of, of manufacturing. There are so many opportunities out there and a lot of folks just don't know that it's available. And by having a center where we can um, offer things like walk in and, and you know, meet with and experience some of these pieces um, in short term workshops. So maybe there's a two hour workshop um, or maybe they just come in to, to explore what the career might be. Um, that's one component of it. The other component is we can offer more advanced workshops, two hour and four hour types of experiences um, where it gives a person the opportunity to explore what kinds of career opportunities there are. You know, if you're not sure about mechatronics or machining or welding, what is what, then you can come in and, and, and check it out. Um, there's also going to be a, uh, a computer training center within the, the uh, center, maybe 20, probably 20 or so computers. And we use a tool called 180 Skills. It's, it's an interactive uh, platform where folks can come in and sit down and, and in an hour um, learn different things about many different aspects of manufacturing just to get them uh, exposed and excited about it. Um, we would have somebody uh, at the center that uh, would do the day, uh, day operations. It would be supported by our faculty here from Goodwin and our lab techs and uh, um, uh, other adjuncts that we have access to. And um, there would also be a community liaison outreach person that would be able to work with the many groups um, throughout Hartford to get the word out about these opportunities. In, in one way, I like to describe it. If you, if, if you remember pre-COVID, when, um, you know, like a Home Depot would, would schedule, uh, you know, these workshops on Saturday morning and come in and learn about uh, doing French drains or putting in, putting in fences, um, things like that. Um, that would be kind of an opportunity for us to do uh, with people walking in off the street and, and just exploring. Um, the location being right across the street from the Hartford Public Library is, is a great location on Park Street. And, uh, and it's right in the heart of, uh, of, of that community. So uh, um, that's kind of a, a big picture of uh, what we're looking at and the types of uh, materials that we would be doing uh, for starters. Thank you, Mr. Thurmer. Uh, Aaron, you have anything to add or Peter? Okay, so I have a few questions before I turn it over to, the, uh, to my colleagues. So 
you know, it sounds, you know, from what I just picked up, it sounds like more of an introductory type of uh, classes. Um, is there any, is there a higher level of uh, education after the introductory? Do you have a uh, sort of a, a vocational type of hands-on training, yeah. a six month to one year course, and is it accredited? Yes, we do. Uh, what are the purpose of the centers was not to replicate the, the, labs out here in East Hartford. It, it just, it's not the money to do that. Um, the programs that we could offer is to introduce folks. And then if they're so inclined, so maybe they want to get into machining, then we could offer the first couple of courses at the site that don't need the heavy machine. So um, say we get somebody who's really interested in learning how to do design, 3D design. Um, we can offer the master camp course and do that there. We can offer them uh, the introductory courses on, on uh, the programming that we do for the CNC machine. We can actually offer the first two courses in the welding series uh, because it's based around safety. And we actually have um, virtual welding units that, that folks use. And they, they, it teaches that muscle motor memory of, uh, you know, which is so uh, essential to making a good weld. Um, but we couldn't possibly replicate that um, in a center in Hartford. So the folks would be able to come over to the, to the uh, college, the university, and then work on the big machines and the big labs. I mean, um, the, okay. uh, the, the, they call them mini mills, but they're anything but mini, uh, which is the CNC machines. We have desktop versions that are meant to be trainers to teach people what, um, what a CNC machine mill would do, uh, or a lathe for that matter. And, and uh, it's how they take metals off. Um, it's to teach, we could teach them how to take the program. You know, they have an idea in their head and it's like, okay, how do I take this idea and create it in a 3D design um, on a computer program, put it on a thumb drive, plug it into a regular CNC machine and actually make the thing that you had designed in your head. When people can see that that's possible and you see the light go on for that very first experience, you, you know there's something special going on in there. Um, our, our mission, our hope is to inspire people to bring out the maker inside of them. Um, there are so many creative people and they just don't have the venue to explore what they can do with it. And, uh, and the training that's provided gives them some of the foundations to say, geez, I really like this. We can do blueprint reading. We can, we can do the math skills. And, and, and a lot of folks are, get, uh, uh, are afraid of math. And uh, a lot of it's, it's basics. But when we teach it in context, when we show somebody a formula and we show them where you get the numbers from and how you plug them in and it works and the machine works. And then you say, by the way, that was a, that was a, a, a trig function. And they're like trig. Yeah. And you realize you're pretty smart, don't you? You can do trig. So, uh, you know, but it's not a separate course and something like that. Um, it, it really is an empowering experience to watch that happen and to see people um, embrace these opportunities. Uh, is very neat. The place to start is right there in the neighborhoods where folks can walk in and right. do this, f find the right fit for them, and then give them the opportunity to do more training, learn more about that field, earn credit towards it, but then okay. to get the advanced stuff that would have to be in the labs over here. Right. Okay. And then uh, now you mentioned that they can go to the labs over there in uh, East Harper. Is there uh, any resource or um free transportation for resort uh, for um to, to travel back and forth from the from the neighborhoods to your Goodwin College. Well Goodwin is on a bus line and we do have uh we've had passes in the past uh to, to help people to uh, get from Hartford over to the school. Uh, um, in fact there's two bus lines that, that run right to uh Hartford um when the time comes uh, for folks to come over. So uh that's part of it. Um, when somebody becomes a part of Goodwin University, uh, a student, um, all of the resources available become available to them. We have uh, uh, student services, career services, help them with interviewing, resume building. We have a food pantry that, that uh, supplies for our students, um, the counseling, any resource that any other Goodwin University student would have 
becomes available to them as they need it. Um, you know, they, they become a part of our greater community as we become a part of their community. All right. And then my last question before I pass it, pass it on to uh, my colleagues. Uh, have you and the uh, Hartford Development Services identified uh, several locations in the North End just to uh, more or less focus on which is best and centralized? Uh, th we're looking at, at two locations. We, we have the one in the South End on Park Street, but we don't have a definitive uh, location in the North End yet. Okay. Uh, so I'm passing the, the rain over to my colleagues. Anyone has any questions or comments? Councilman LeBron. Yeah, so um, thank you for that presentation and super excited about these uh, technology and uh, I and through you, uh, uh, Mr. Chair, um, super excited about these technology um, opportunities uh, for our folks. Um, the question I have is not so much in terms of the uh, program itself, but more in terms of the system of controls. So these dollars were appropriated in April of last year. And my thoughts are, or my belief is that um, they need to be expended by the end of this uh, fiscal year. Um, and if that's co uh, correct, I just want to know the system of controls in terms of the how this money is going to be dove out and then um and then uh uh are there any full-time employments as associated with this um so yeah the question is is does this money when does this money have to be spent by uh, i'm not sure what the what the spend date is but i can give you an idea of what the spend is going to be on and uh, we, we do have, um, there would be a center, uh, the idea is to have a center administrator, somebody who's there during daytime hours um, to make sure the place is set up and operating and meet and greet students and, and interact with people coming in and out um, of the facility. Uh, there would be a community uh, outreach liaison person um, who would be outward facing to connect with the, the, the different um, neighborhoods, the different uh, nonprofits, the different client bases, anybody providing these services to connect with the, with the neighborhood to get the information out about what's going on. Um, yeah, there's a, a, a security officer that's in the mix too. Um, so there's um, at least those uh, three full-time jobs uh, that's associated with it. Uh, a large uh, or a, a good part of that money is um, going to be to supply the equipment that we would use to provide the training um, and things like uh, calipers and micrometers and steel rules and, and uh, uh, desktop computers. Uh, you know, there's a there's a computer lab that we want to do in there. There's something called a, 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 a hot. It's a Haas controller. It's the unit that you actually do the programming on for the machines. There's there's height gauges and. And just uh, you know, whiteboards, smart boards, uh, virtual weld simulators, um, you know, everything that we can that would fit on a desktop so that it's mobile. Uh, you know, the infrastructure to build out bigger machines is just it's, you know, it it just isn't there, um, and and not needed for for what we're looking at here. So uh, um, the mechatronics components there in units that we would that uh, open up, and so you could do pneumatics and. Uh, wiring and, and the interaction of how uh, um, all of that goes together. So there's a good, uh, a, a good chunk that put on that um, for those resources. And then um, and there's, there is, um, let's see, what was the other? And uh, um, general supplies, some uh, open houses uh, to be able to bring the community and introduce folks to it. Um, some, some money set aside for marketing uh, to get the word out in, in flyers and social media, things like that. Um, we, we really want to be able to integrate into the communities and, and be a place where they come in and, and can see what's going on. So I, I hope that helps. If, yeah, if thank, you. I, I, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Erin. Because the reason why I was asking, because it just, I, you know, oftentimes um, the, the, the time sensitivity around it and sure. uh, it, it can be an ambitious and daunting task in and of itself. Um, so the, the things sound wonderful and we're happy about the jobs and those things, but just to uh, understand the, the timeline in terms of spend down. Sure. So um, as a reminder, this is a, um, per our 
our ordinance, right? And whenever we receive grant funds, we have to get authorization in order to execute any agreements or to receive those dollars. And so there are still some steps that have to be done between the city and the state um, to enter into an assistance agreement with Goodwin as a pass-through entity through the state of Connecticut. Typically, um, these were bond authorization funds from last year. So I, I would assume, and typically it's about a three-year timeline to spend um, with those state dollars. And so um, what I know, though, is Goodwin has actually put together a program that they actually want to move much faster than that. Um, so I don't see why these funds would actually get spent um, at least in the first. The first half is going to be spent by the summer, and hopefully we'll have the other half spent quickly thereafter within probably the next year. Um, so, but we're still in the process of working out final budgets and timelines and such, but I, I think it's safe to say it's probably a three-year spend, and we do have to finalize the assistance agreement with the state of Connecticut, and any processes um, that need to be followed will be following the state's procurement line, as these are state bond dollars um, that'll be passed through to a good one. Thank you both. Welcome. Yes, I, I uh, just want to say one thing before I... Um, Pass it on to uh, Councilman Mictum. It's my understanding that Senator Fonfara actually came up with this thought. Uh, if you could share that that with us, Erin. Sure. So um, this was a bond commission ask from Senator Fonfara. So he actually went to the bond commission um, and got this approved as a, from a million dollars. And we're kind of it, the city has been brought in after the fact. Um, and so we are just, because we are the entity that has to pass through, we are going through the steps now to actually pull all that together. But yes, this was a, this was a um, effort driven by Senator Fonfara. Um, he had been working with Goodwin for quite some time um, in order to put this proposal together um, with this desire to support Hartford residents by making sure that there were these walk-in centers in the city of Hartford. Okay. Thank you, Senator Fonfara. Uh, we're moving on to, uh, Councilman Mictum, and then followed by uh, Councilwoman Shirley Surgeon. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. A couple questions. Uh, one is, and forgive me if this is somewhere in all of the materials about this and I missed it, is there sort of a model that this is based on? Like, has, a, it, has this, you know, has something like this been done? I mean, I know it's been done, but like, what is the sort of the closest like we could look to say Cleveland or somewhere did something like this that has a little track record. I'd just be curious to know if that's out there in the world. Oh. So, so be, before Mr. Thurmer answers that question, I can honestly say back in the 80s, I, I am a product of one of these programs myself. And I, I did learn how to operate a CNC machine and a lathe and a bridge port. And this uh, program was called the Manpower Program. And uh, surprisingly enough, it was uh, located right behind the old McCook Hospital that everyone uh, is trying to look to renovate. Um, it's a great program. Uh, I think this is the same model, if I'm not mistaken, Mr. Thurmer, if you can uh, share and answer that question. But it's definitely a, um, um, a, a program that uh, works with the grassroots folks, identifies these folks, identify their skills, and then put them into the right path on the technology that they may want to learn and uh, it makes them good money. Uh, it's a good income uh, type of uh, jobs that's being offered here. Yes, thank you for that. And, 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 and it is, that is true. And there are programs um, around the state and even around Hartford in, in construction uh, types of markets, those kinds of training programs. Uh, but there's really nothing around advanced manufacturing. And uh, we've built a pretty good track record of working with um, schools uh, in the region to bring students, for example, a, 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 a traditional high school. And we've, worked, and we've done this with Hartford, as a matter of fact, where we've brought Hartford uh, public school students over to our eCamp program and taught them some of the basics. They earned high school and college credit at the same time towards a, a, in their manufacturing certificate. Um, we have done a lot of work over the last few years. We've trained over 2,000 incumbent workers. Um, we hear a lot about the skills gap. Um, there are incumbent workers that are missing different pieces. You know, they learn a lot on the job, but they don't learn everything. And so we've gone in with our workshops and we've filled those gaps uh, for those folks. We have the, the people on staff to do that. And so from our experience with doing uh, regular cert certificate training, um, here at the university with our incumbent workers, with our exposure with the uh, uh, high schools, 
Um, we've had very successful uh, reentry programs, both in uh, CNC uh, machining um, and, and business startups, as a matter of fact, for, for that population. And we've uh, retrained folks in uh, um, quality uh, all here at the university and our outreach to um, we're, we haven't quite touched every town in the state yet, but we're probably close to uh, 80 or 90 different towns. So, so really what we've done is we've pulled this all together and said, wow, here's an opportunity for us to um, right here in our backyard, right here in Hartford, to be able to offer this within the communities, um, the best of Carson, everything that we can bring together uh, to be able to start that pipeline. Um, towards employment. And I think uh, the, the, the real important piece here is um, not to get somebody into anything, but to give them a chance to explore and get them into something that they're really excited about. It's just as good for them to come in and say, you know, this isn't for me, then maybe with our partners, they can find, we can find something else to move them into. But there's so many things to do in manufacturing. This is going to be the play. This is going to, it's part place of exploration, part place of developing those basic skill sets that can get you employed. We do something called the Certified Production Technician Program. It carries college credits, but could also be done for, for continuing it. So if somebody didn't have a high school diploma, they can still go through it. It gives them all the basics of, of safety, of production, um, of the quality process and, and, and the um, maintenance process. Uh, and that knowledge alone, it, it, it comes with a national cert recognized certification if they pass the certification exam, but that knowledge alone is often enough to get folks entry-level positions in, in different uh, manufacturers. So it, we're really able to take a lot of this and create this um, right here in Hartford. And, and I think that that is the incredibly exciting part for us uh, to be able to do that. I have three more questions, but I think the answers will be much shorter. <laughs> okay. Uh, one is what's the ballpark, like the capacity in terms of the number of, of people served per year, let's say, or at a time? Well, we're, we're, we're hoping to serve um, up around 260 uh, students in this first year. Okay. Um, yeah. And is, are there plans uh, to provide instruction in Spanish? Uh, not specifically at this time. Um, if, if I can find instructors who are bilingual and anybody can help me <laughs> uh, bring those folks to us, uh, that would be incredibly awesome. Um, we, we would love to have that uh, because I don't necessarily need, you know, uh, crit pedigree, you know, folks with master's degrees to help do this training. I need experts. And so if, if, if anyone can help us uh, reach out to them too, that would be awesome. Okay. My last question is uh, when I know, I, I think it was Aaron who said the timeline is, is getting ironed out, but when do you expect to start taking in students? Uh, I'm, I'm going to tell Ballpark. you a couple, a couple of things. I would be I would be really happy if we can get this going by the fall. Sooner would be better, but a couple of things have to happen. We have to have the money, sign the lease, get the equipment. Okay, and with the supply chain, there's some challenges with that. But that doesn't mean that there aren't things that we can't bring over from the university now and set up, um, and and get the word out to folks. So we still have a couple of positions to go. Um, we, we have been waiting, idling, waiting, you know, we're, we're anxious to get this going. So um, I don't want to tell you, oh, we're going to do this by May and then it doesn't happen. I would say if we can get it by, uh, by September or earlier, that would be our goal. Earlier, the better. The quicker we can get this going, the, the happier a lot of us will be. Understood. Thank you. Thank That's you. all I have. Council Woman Surgeon. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I, I take notes of some of my questions that have been answered already. Uh, so I'm just going to go to a couple of ones which I didn't hear. Uh, what size, first of all, thank you, Mr. Trainer, for your presentation. Uh, what size location or what is your optimum size of, um, of the location do you need? 
Uh, somewhere at about 2,500 square feet, give or take, that depending on the layout is, is probably ideal for what we're doing. Okay. All right. That's it. And you said you had a couple places in North Harford that you were looking at. So you just haven't boiled it down as yet? That, that is correct. Okay. Just one last question, uh, Mr. Chair. And that is, um, I know this is an introductory um, to uh, people who don't know anything about advanced manufacturing, uh, but as the students are coming in and they may be interested in some portion of it, do you have any programs for uh, remedial education, maybe their math, their English, whatever they're gonna need um, as part of the training program? Uh, we have the resources to help um, with those skill sets. Uh, you know, if somebody may not be ready for, um, be, because of a math deficiency or a language deficiency, we would have to work with that. We used to do a lot of uh, English as a second language uh, training and programming. Um, and, and that's why having a, a bilingual individuals to help teach would be awesome. Um, but uh, I, I think um, a lot of the skill sets uh, can be brought up to the, it, the math isn't that complicated is what I'm saying is, is for, for what they would need to learn to be successful. And we work with students. We've had students in our programs that honestly um, didn't know decimals, couldn't really couldn't do division. And they were successful in our program uh, because of the way it's presented and how we work with students. So, uh, um, you know, if, if they're interested, you can work I, with them. Just one last question, uh, Mr. Chair, and I know uh, time is yes. against us, but you know, the committee meeting uh, is supposed to be starting. Um, just one last question. Do you, do, how much do you work with them after they're finishing going through the certificate to pass whatever they need to pass to get a little license? Um, how much do you work with the person in getting that done? Uh, we we usually introduce our graduates uh, to employers. We have employers coming in from the very beginning and interviewing them and talking to them about career opportunities. We put them in our, our, our college career network. Um, we help them develop their resumes. They work with our career services. And once you're a member of Goodwin University, even once you have your job and you're gone and you want to change jobs, you can come back and we work with you all over again. Our career services is amazing. But uh, we like to do a, a handoff from, from our students to an employer. Um, at the end of the day, it, it's up to the students whether they want to work for them or not. But, uh, and we've had great success doing that. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, sir. All Thank right. you, Councilwoman. I'd just like got, to make I a motion. Have one, oh. I just have one more question. So um, real quick. So how, how many uh, manufacturers are partnered with uh, the Goodwin University to have that pipeline? Like, for example, Pratt Whitney, Hamilton Standards. We're, we're working with about 60 different employers um, and uh, we'll bring in anywhere from five or six a semester um, to talk with companies. You know, um, Sikorsky was just here today, as a matter of fact, and, uh, you know, as, as, as an example. And so we're, we're regularly putting folks in um, and we're doing the same thing um, with our welding students. Um, we have about 30 companies just involved in mechatronics, um, that field. So we have a pretty good network uh, put together for our manufacturers. Okay, thank you. I, um, and I, so that's all the question we'll be uh, offering uh, because we do have another committee that we have to uh, start. So can, I, uh, can we entertain a motion? Uh, yes, uh, I uh, make a motion to favorably approve this resolution. Second. Well, wait a second, guys. You must remember, there's two different committees are meeting together. So Nick's motion has to be seconded by a Louis uh, person, and yes. then we can make our motion for the PDNH. So a motion has been made by uh, Councilman Nick LeBron, second by Councilman Mictum. No, you my can't. Se my that. second doesn't count because I'm not on Louis. I'm only oh, on Oh, okay. PDH. I thought I saw your hand right um, Do I have volume? Yes, yes, you do. There you go. All right, so I second, second it. So a second by Councilman John Gale. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, Abstention? Against? 
Okay, it's a pass. So uh, no, this uh, no. wait no. now. No. Now I move as, as a member right. of PDH to send okay. it back favorably. Yes, exactly. Right. And I second it. And so now, you, Mr. Chair, you can call for your. Thank you. Go ahead, sir. So all in favor? All right. Aye. 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 <laughs> I'm just curious as to who's, who's going to do oh. the notes. <laughs> yeah, this is, this is uh, yeah. So for, all right, so this uh, this resolution has been passed favorably uh, to uh, be sent to council. All right. And I uh, I call this meeting as for the PDH adjourned. I Wait, call the meeting for Louis C adjourned here. And oh, so for those that want to join the other Louis C meeting, we're hopping on the other link. So I'll see you on the other line. Thank, Thank you, everyone. Have a good night. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Bye -bye.